sister has a part to play. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee. And go with thy servant. And he answered, and I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling, cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. I'm sure you know this story, but we're making this as an illustration to help ourselves. You know the axe head in any church is this desire and passion and zeal and fire and decision and the thrust for evangelism. Once that is off, the axe head is gone. And then if we're going to recover the axe head, number one, there should be realization. Without that realization, are we going to even cry out? We've lost something. We're missing something. Although the activities are there, although all the other things are there, the administration is there, we have lost something. You cry out. And then we cry to the right source. We're crying to the servants of the Lord. And we're crying unto the Lord himself. They're praying. And as we pray like that, asking the Lord, we have lost something precious, something important, something central, something significant. We need each back. And what a wonderful thing it will be if this church, with all the branches, and with all the leaders and the workers and the members, all who are hearing the sound of my voice right now, if everyone will cry to the Lord and say, yes, we know, good church, wonderful church, church of great programs, but we have lost the art of evangelism. The axe head is gone. And then what a wonderful thing it will be. We as a whole together in unity, we travail before the Lord. And we cry before the Lord. And we pray before the Lord. Lord, we need our axe head back. And then it says, and the man of God said, where fell it? Don't you have to locate where this evangelism thrust and zeal and passion and fire and confidence, assurance? Don't we need to find out where we lost it? You know, if you have lost something and you don't even know that you have lost anything, you will not seek for it. But if you will know that you have lost something important, something significant, and you are saying, when did I lose it? Now, church, can we think as a body together? When did we actually stop this personal evangelism? Which year? Think about it. What then became the most important thing to us that replaced that evangelism? Think about it because if you don't find out when it was lost, where it was lost, how it was lost, you're not going to recover it. We'll just come to Bible study and have another wonderful time together, 1.2.1.2.3, 1, and then wasn't that a great Bible study? If we don't see and find out when and where and how we lost that art, we'll never be able to recover it. Then the, the man of God said, where fell it? Showed him the place locate the place where it was lost, the year when it was lost, what became the most important thing to us when it was lost. And then we'll be able to now have the power and the strength, the revelation of the Lord on how to recover. And it says, he cut down, he cut down a stick and cast it in there. And the iron did swim. The iron will swim again. Revelation will come again. The power, the thirst, the energy, the enthusiasm will come again in Jesus' name. Therefore, said he, take it. Take it up to thee. You, you need to take it up again. Now that God is giving us revelation and is renewing our heart, we need to take it up again. That's why we came today. And I'm believing that this study of the word of God will do something in your heart. Amen. And we will take it back again in Jesus' name. 
recovering the lost art of personal evangelism. We divide the message to three parts. Number one, consequences of neglecting personal evangelism. The consequences of neglecting personal evangelism. Number two, compelling necessity of personal evangelism. The compelling necessity of personal evangelism. Number three now, commitment needed for personal evangelism. Commitment that's needed for personal evangelism. The consequences of neglecting personal evangelism. We already know we're children of God, we're Bible students, and we know our Bibles enough to understand that sinners cannot get saved without the preaching of the gospel. Everybody knows that. And if the soul winner's duty is to preach the gospel to the sinners, if we don't carry out that duty, and if we don't do something about it, there'll be a consequence. And actually, the consequence of neglecting personal evangelism, they are number one is the loss and the waste of ripened harvest. The loss and the waste of ripened harvest. We're looking at John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 35. Say not ye that are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. You know, the Lord is very much interested in how we discuss among one another. Say not ye. Are you not talking? Are you not discussing? Are you not kind of uh, imagining among yourselves that it's not time yet? There's still time. There's still time. Say not ye. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The Lord was telling them, you don't see what I see. All of you disciples, you see, in another way, what hinders uh, the purpose of God and the plan of God in our lives when we don't see how God sees? What hinders the purpose of God, the plan of God, for all the servants of God, for all the saints of God, for all the children of God, when the saints of God, the servants of God, the children of God, when they do not see what Christ, our Lord, our Master, what is seeing. And the Lord said, are you not saying that there are yet four months and then will come the time of the harvest? But he says, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. For the fields are white already to harvest. I pray we'll see what God is seeing. In verse 36, and, it's, and, and he that reapeth receiveth wages. He that reapeth receiveth wages. Of course, if we're not reaping, the consequence is we're going to miss the wages or the reward of the work we should have done and gathereth fruit unto eternal life life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together and herein is that saying true one soweth and another reapeth i send you to reap that which whereon ye bestowed no labor all the men labored and ye have entered ye are entered into their labors you understand what the Lord Jesus was saying? He said, a lot of work has been done already. He said, you have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you will accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. 
And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.